Today we're going to be looking at transformations of quadratic functions. The standards that we're covering are listed here, and to be successful you need to be able to describe transformations of quadratic functions, graph transformations of quadratic functions, and write functions that represent transformations of quadratic functions. All right, if you remember, in the last chapter, we looked at transformations, but only of linear equations and absolute value equations. But these are going to work very much the same. So today we're going to be looking at quadratic equations. So what are quadratic equations? A quadratic function is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k, where a is not equal to zero. All right, so if a is equal to zero, zero times anything is zero, and the quadratic comes from having a squared term. So if this were zero, if there's no quadratic term, then it's not quadratic. So there must be an a. It can be positive or negative, but it can't be zero. And this is also vertex form, which you will see down here. But you can also put a quadratic function can also be written as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is standard form, and we will be looking at that a little later as well. So this is just one way to write a quadratic function, and this is the way that we usually look at it when we're doing transformations. All right, a parabola is a U-shaped graph of a quadratic function. The vertex is the lowest point on a parabola that opens up or the highest point on a parabola that opens down. And vertex form of a quadratic function is f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k, where a is not equal to zero. And the vertex is h k. All right, key ideas. So you remember um, h is going to move you horizontally. Okay, so you can see here that it's moving left or right, so that's a horizontal movement. K is going to move you up or down. That is a vertical movement, so a vertical translation comes from K. And if it is reflected across the X axis, okay, it's going to have a negative in front of the F of X. So if it's negative F of X, it's going to be a reflection across the X axis. If the negative is inside the parentheses. See how it's outside here? This one, it's inside. Then it's going to be reflected across the y-axis. If you take a quadratic function and you reflect it across the y-axis, it's going to be a reflection, but it's going to look exactly the same as the original. All right, so we also have horizontal shrinks and stretches. So here, um, this determines A or A determines whether it's going to be a shrink or a stretch. So you can look at if A is greater than 1, how it comes in towards the y-axis. If A is between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction, then it's going to get wider. So a horizontal stretch goes away from the y-axis by a factor of 1 over A. Okay, And a horizontal shrink goes towards the y-axis by a factor of 1 over a when a is greater than 1. All right, so this is important to remember. This is a little confusing for a lot of people. Remember this horizontal um, stretches and shrinks is going to be by a factor of 1 over a. So whatever a is, it's going to be 1 over a. So mark that in your notes. Vertical stretches and shrinks. All right, so if A is greater than 1, you can see here it gets closer to the Y. If it's a fraction, if it's between 0 and 1, you can see it gets further away from the Y axis. So a vertical stretch goes away from the X axis by a factor of A. And a vertical shrink goes towards the X axis by a factor of A when A is between 0 and 1. All right, let's look at some examples. So example one says transformations of a quadratic function. Describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared. This is your parent function. That means it's the most basic quadratic function you have. It's got a vertex at 0, 0, and you can see it crosses through 
negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and it crosses through 1, 1. So when you see a parent function of a quadratic, you know that this is the parent function. All right, so it says describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared represented by g of x equals x plus 4 quantity squared minus 1. Then graph each function. All right, so we know that. Vertex form of a quadratic function is a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. That was in the definitions. That was in the information that we just talked about. All right, so if we're given x plus 4 quantity squared minus 1, that means we know that a is 1, so we can just leave that off. And then we have x minus, and how do we get a plus 4? If we know the original equation, has a negative here, right? The formula has a negative, so we have to have x minus, and that would be a negative 4, and then minus 1. All right, so that tells us that h is negative 4, and k is negative 1. So as far as transformations go, we know that H is our horizontal movement. This is our horizontal movement. It moves left or right. And this is our vertical movement. So because H is negative 4, the graph of G is a translation 4 units to the left. And because K is negative 1, it's 1 unit down. So this tells us to move it to the left. This tells us to move it down. All right, so I have graphed the parent function. I also have another function right on top of it. So I'm going to go left 4 and down 1. Let's see if I counted that correctly. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1. So our transformation would be this function here. So it's the exact same shape and everything. A is the same. The only difference is we moved left and down. So for um, the part where it says describe the transformation, we can just put and move left four and down one. That's our transformation. Left four and down one from the parent function. And that gets you to g of x, the transformation of f of x. Example 2, transformations of quadratic functions. So we're going to describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared, your parent function again, represented by g. Then graph each function. All right, so describe the transformation of a. So we have g of x equals negative 1 half x squared. Well, if you remember, if it has a negative inside, if you have a negative right here, that's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. If it were inside parentheses and there were a negative, it would be a reflection across the y-axis. But this is a reflection across the x-axis because this is negative. The one-half will be a vertical shrink by a factor of one-half. All right, so what's that going to look like? So what we can do is make a quick table. We only need three points, really. So we can say um, x and y, and we can use um, negative 1, 0, and 1. Actually, let's use um, a couple numbers that are a little bit bigger, so we get a full effect of what it's going to look like here. All right, so let's just go negative 2, 0, and positive 2. All right, so we can choose any x's we want. As you can see, I just changed my mind there. We can use any x's we want, and then we plug those in and solve for y. And since these are even now, it's going to make it easier since we have to multiply it by a half. So we're going to take negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Half of negative 4, or sorry, half of 4 is 2, and then negative. 
So that's going to be a negative 2. Take 0 times anything is 0. So that one's going to be 0, 0. So the vertex is not going to move. And then take 2 and plug it in. 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2. Times that negative is also a negative 2. All right, so what we're going to do is make our transformation. G of X is going to be a reflection. And it's going to go through these points here. So we can say we need a point through negative 2, negative 2. and over to down to positive two negative two and we know that it still has a point here at zero zero all right so do that all right so we're going to take our new function here i've got to take my vertex back up to zero zero and I need it to cross through the two points that I have placed on here. So that's how you would graph a transformation using just a table of values. And you can see that this one is a little wider than this one now. And that's all for a part. So to describe it, it's going to be a reflection across the X. It's going to be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. And then this would be, this would be G of X. And this is your parent function, of course. All right. B part says G of X equals parentheses 2X squared plus one. All right. Since the 2X is in parentheses squared, we know this is going to be a horizontal um, movement. So we're going to have this number here. Our A is all squared and our X is squared. And then we have plus 1. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the graph is a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 over A. Remember in the key, um, key ideas, when it's a horizontal it's 1 over a, so it's going to be 1 over 2. So it's going to be um, a horizontal strength by a factor of 1 half, followed by a translation of 1 unit up, because this number would move you up. So this is your k value. All right, let's see what that would look like on the graph. All right, again, we can make a table of values to graph this. So we can say um, x and why we just need to choose a few points um let's just choose negative one zero and one because this time we are actually squaring the numbers all right so we're going to take negative one plug it in for x negative one times two is negative two negative two squared is four four plus one is five Zero times anything is zero. Zero squared is zero. Zero plus one is one. And then take one, plug it in. One times two is two. Two squared is four. Four plus one is five. So you can see there's still that symmetry there. So we're going to take our g of x here. And we are going to go up. Now the Well, let's go ahead and put our points on here. So we're going to have a new point at negative 1, 5. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1. And then 1, 1, 5. All right, so that's where our new function is going to go through those three points there. All right, so let's move this function up. All right, and that would be the graph of g of x. All right, it says look for structure in example.